Hello, everybody. Still moving around my chats like always. Can you hear me okay? Oh, my keyboard's not too loud. All right, cool. Oh, let me bring up always one thing I forget. A little stream cheat sheet. Alrighty, and today we are going to be cover to be doing a, um, oh, I didn't even change the title. Today we're not doing evening wear. This is a lie. Uh, l let me change that. Uh, unlock it, please. Where is this cover? Today we are doing some cyberpunk designs. Not evening wear, though technically you could do that. Right now we're going to be doing some uh, some outerwear, which we can mix with the <laughs> with the evening wear if we want, depending on how fast this goes. Um, but today we're doing cyberpunk, so I'm going to be doing not not high class cyberpunk, not like you know the corporations. I'm going to be doing the classic. We're going to do a jacket. We're going to do, depending on the speed that this goes, I've already made a. Or I've already gotten a pair of pants for our avatar, as well as I'll be doing some just basic undergarments or like t-shirts and things like that that are just slightly, slightly different, more dystopian style. So let's go ahead and get started. I am Megan. I am a trainer and designer here at Marvelous Designer. And in the chat, we have Eric, who is one of our business developers. He is helping me answer questions and help moderate the chat. And let's get started with resources. So before we get started, I will be sharing in the chats a link to our Discord channel. So here at the Discord channel, you can ask other users in, um, in our Marvelous Designer official Discord channel. Um, I do moderate the channel, but you know, don't constantly at me. It, I do have other tasks to do, but you can talk with other <laughs> You can talk with other users and other um, super users of Marvelous Designer that have been using Marvelous Designer for many years. As well, for those of you who are not on our YouTube channel right now, I'm linking you to our YouTube channel. Come on. Where we will be keeping these streams and other tutorial contents in perpetuity, whereas on the Twitch channel, we will just leave them up. Um for the 14 days, but we will, we do not make the clips. And as well, for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, we do have a lot of tutorials, which I'm linking in the chat as well. Um, and with that is just one of our playlists for our tutorials. We have a lot of tutorials that have been made using either in Marvelous Designer 9 and above that are the more current tutorials. Okay, why is the Twitch stream not sending? There it goes. And those tutorials you can reference um, and actually follow along with. And those will help you get started using Marvelous Designer and starting to understand how pattern making works and things like that. Uh, we have a question. What is the best way to make rhinestones for Marvelous Designer? Honestly, for rhinestones, I have just brought in, or <laughs> I've just made tiny little OBJs and you just bring them in as, um, as trim and you can just apply them to your garment. 
Actually, I think I might be doing that at the end if I've got time. Something similar, which I can show you. Um, I am getting washed out. One second. Lower the brightness on that. There we go. So that the lights of Gondor are no longer lit. Yeah, so we'll see how far, how fast I can go. Today I will be focusing on making a leather coat, a leather jacket in the two hours, as well as um, the undershirt. And I think I'd rather focus on making an interesting removable hood type thing. Um, I've patterned it and I have it to the side, but I want to see how fast we can go. Uh, what is the preferred thing to make in Marvelous and the most difficult thing I don't like? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I make everything for cloth in Marvelous Designer. Like, I guess the most difficult thing I don't like is things that are just very dense with met, dense with uh, OBJs that are have been brought in. It's the only difficult thing about it is that it's just a little bit slower on the system because it's just adding more and more mesh that I have to, uh, that the computer has to calculate into the simulation. But that's just how it goes, so I don't really have much of a preference. So let's go ahead and to get started, I'm going to go, we are going to wing this. I don't actually have a completed design prepped, so we're just gonna play around with it today. So I'm just bringing in my avatar. Last time I did a female avatar. Today we'll do a male avatar and a design for him. So first of all, I'm going to make a shirt for him. So this is going to be a more dystopian design of cyberpunk. So I'm just going to be making a basic long t-shirt with, I think I want to add a thumb hole for him. And then we'll add the jacket on top and then we'll see how fast we go till I can make pants or not. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use the shirt that comes with Marvelous Designer and get that started. I could pattern this myself, but for the sake of the speed of the stream, I'm going to go ahead and use pattern manipulation skills here. If you want to learn how to make a shirt like this, it is going to be in our beginning tutorials on how to like begin making shirts. And there's about th four different ways to make a basic shirt like this. So let's go ahead. I want to make it long sleeve and give him some thumb holes. So I'm going to lengthen these sleeves. Feel free to ask questions as I'm doing this. Obviously this is um, just kind of a watch me work type of stream. All right. Since I did this, it does cause a little bit of simulation issues or collision issues. So a simple and easy way to fix that is to turn on arrangement points, select your sleeve and then re-simulate. It is a lot wider than I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and just adjust that on the armhole. This is actually convenient because I can just mark it. All right, cool. Making a thumb hole, I'm just gonna slice this down the center just with a line so I can see it. What I'm doing here is a little trick. I'm using the ghost in the 3D window. So the ghost is this blue dot that appears it is what you use for the center of your gizmo, but as well, you can see it in the 2D window. And here it's showing me exactly where I've, I've clicked. So I can go and create an internal ellipse for the thumb hole. Right click and convert to hole.
Now this is 20 particle distance, so it is going to be a little blocky. But that'll help get me started here. And I'm holding shift to keep this um, line straight as I move it. How do I use pins to keep clothes in place? Are you asking about the pin to avatar or the pin to garment? Let's see, do I want this to be, I definitely want it to be tighter on his wrist as well. Let's see. It's a little curved, but that's okay. It's pretty blocky as you can see here. This is again, just because this is 20 particle distance. All right, so I want to remove this reference line that I made for myself. And I am going to, using the edit pattern tool, I am going to make this a little thinner by just grabbing those segment points. And I'm going to give this sleeve a little bit of a curve. I'm probably probably going to okay I'm just going to cheat this I'm just going to make this a little bit tighter because this is pretty it's got a pretty big armhole opening here as you can see in his underarm I'm just going to go ahead and narrow this uh, the armhole here by do and to do so I need to increase the height on this flat pattern piece for the torso and then make smaller the wings on this sleeve here. Increasing the height of both the front and the back. And now it is a tighter fitting sleeve. Move that. And true that up. There we go. Let's go ahead and do the same to this hand. And just to see how, <laughs> just to see how this drapes, I'm gonna bring in my fabric and put it on here first. Sometimes I don't like doing this because it does um, change how it drapes and how um, the simulation might slow down, but I think it's important here as I'm creating a fit for the sleeve. Let's do cotton jersey. Control A and I'm just dragging and dropping and simulating. Let's see. Rayon, Terry. And I'm looking at how they're draping. So I think I am going to grab the rayon because it's going to be a little bit more loose. There we go. I'll have a little bit more wrinkles and I can make this a little bit tighter. So I know most people aren't going to see this, but this is causing a point here because this is not a square it's not squared off so to fix that I'm going to add points to my line and then just square this off just a little bit selecting both of my lines and, or both of my segment points holding shift, not control, right clicking align and bottom. And that will make this flat. And don't worry about these collision issues. This is just because it is still at 20 particle distance. And since this is now a knit, I can increase or 
make smaller the armhole. Because what I'm going for right now is the fit really quick and then I can get to designing much quicker. I'm merging my center front and center back lines because these patterns don't need to have that split seam. And then I'm going to change the neckline. So here's a way to change your neckline if you don't want to just do everything in the 2D window. You can use the line 3D pattern tool, which can draw in the 3D space. So if I wanted this neckline to be much wider, I could do that this way. Holding control to make curve points and shift to make, or Control to make curve points and then letting go of control to make straight lines or segment points and then holding shift to make straight lines as you can see here. But because of the nature of the curve of his neck here, it's trying to go across the top of the other mesh. So I'm just going to freehand that. And then since it's across the half, I can just double click here and I only have to work on the half. So when I do this and I double click and finish this line, it shows me what it's going to look like in the 2D window as well. And here I can make changes if I want to. Uh, I think I do want to move some stuff using the edit tool. Yes, it is possible to make a cloth shoe that Vikings would wear depending on this era of Viking. In Marvelous Designer, you just need to use uh, leather presets. Yeah, let's try this design. I'm going to go ahead and double click it and choose convert to internal shape. So I can see if I need to make adjustments here. Because I worked join overlapping points. Yeah, that's fine. Um, because I worked on the half. There we go. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm just doing this because I want to see if I can try to make a worn out, stretched out neckline. And here I'm using the edit, come here, the smooth curve tool to just grab that corner and smooth out that curve. All right, so this is going to cause a little bit of a problem on the neckline. That's a patterning issue, but I mean, it's not that important. It's, this is a dystopian garment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, double click my lines. I can select multiple of these lines at the same time and right click and cut and sew. Now, I didn't check my work. <laughs> so these lines may not perfectly cut and sew, so we're going to see. Okay, this worked this time. Sometimes if it does not perfectly cut and sew, that means that you either have overlapping lines like I did previously, that they're trying to cut and sew and it causes an error, or you'll have a tiny little, little spot. Let me draw it, pretend that it's, pretend this is a full line. Or you'll have a tiny line and a little tiny gap right here that is not touching and it won't cut the entire piece. So keep an eye on that. And you can always true up your work. Let me do this one more time. By if you've made lines that you're gonna cut this and you are concerned that this is not going to be completely, it's not going to cut it perfectly just because it's it looks really close but you're not sure and or you have a bunch of parallel lines, let's just say. I can right click and you have two options for these internal lines, choosing extend trim to pattern outline and it'll make the internal line touch the ex the uh, segment points on the exterior so that you can cleanly cut it 
like so. Or you can choose cut and sew, which creates a sewing relationship. But right now I am just chopping up this shirt and I see, I don't want that. I'm going to edit my curve points here. You can see how it's going down and out. Normally you don't really want that in a, in a shirt pattern. So I'm just going to bring back up that curve. So now you can see instead of it going downward, it's going up and that creates an easier fit and it makes the pattern much cleaner. So when you're working with your garments, it's best to, um, to work from, from lowest detail to highest detail. Um, let me see here at the chat. So with the cyberpunk outfits, it's also a case of there's so many different iterations of cyberpunk outfits. So at the end of this, I'll be bringing in the OBJ just to show you how like easy trim works. But, um, this version of cyberpunk, I'm just doing, um, cyberpunk can also be tech wear. So there's a wide range of cyberpunk options, which in this case, I'm choosing the um, dystopian iteration of this. This guy is not, he doesn't have a lot of, he doesn't have a lot of money. It's a lot of dystopian concepts that I'm bringing in. It's closer to tech wear than like actual, like bringing in lighting into this just because we don't, I'm not bringing in lighting to Marvelous Designer in a two hour, in a two hour stream. But we will be bringing in OBJs. That is going to happen at the end, though. Because with the OBJs, it's going to create more mesh to simulate. So you add those at the very end so that you have less work to do and you have less simulation to, for the computer to consider. So the best way to work with Marvelous Designer is going to be working with the garments first. Then you're going to be bringing in your higher detail pieces. And then you're also going to be stepping down the particle distance and increasing the density of the mesh with your garment until you have whatever output you you are looking for. Yeah, so uh, as they were saying for the social class, I am choosing the lower social class this time around. Maybe next time, I if we do want to have another um, cyberpunk style stream, I will probably choose to do the higher class corporate style one that is far more far more style than utility all right so we've we've adjusted the neck of this shirt I'm just gonna go ahead and go as fast as I can here because this is supposed to just be the beginning shirt here this is supposed to go under a coat so I'm going to go ahead and remove the symmetrical patterning or linked editing here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this up so we actually have something. I'm just gonna do probably across the chest and then just down just for an undershirt because that's the whole point. But these are important patterning concepts. Where's this chest? Okay, so I'm just gonna go straight across. This time I'm choosing cut and sew. By choosing cut and sew, it creates a sewing relationship instead of just slicing it apart. And then I'll just go ahead and slice this down. Because now that the fit's done, I can actually get to the designer. Again, choosing cut and sew. And let's do, eh, I want to do the sleeves, but they're going to be under a jacket, so it doesn't matter. So for this, I do want to add small, 
like rolling raw edges for the trim here. So to do that, I'm going to add 498.8 and I'm just going to make a rectangle that is also 498.8, probably 20, 10 millimeters, still probably pretty, pretty wide. But we're just going to see. So here's what here's one way to attach a piece here. I can just sew it and then let it simulate. And it just slingshots right onto it. Can you use the 3D printer to make it actually figure? Um, you can export anything you make in Marvelous Designer to to an OBJ file or as an OBJ file. So technically you could 3D print whatever you make here, as long as you make it, you know, to the correct scale or to the correct ratio to then export whatever you want. But we don't have STL, we don't have step file options. Um, so you'd have to bring it into whatever slicer you prefer to use. We'll see if we do rip clothing. Right now, I am just doing the basic design of the garment because a lot of people prefer to use um, like texture packs for their ripped clothing. Okay, so this one's going down. I want one to go up. So let's go ahead and edit the sewing line. We'll just select that. And so here we have on the property editor, we have custom angle. Actually, I'm going to show you the other way. Okay, I'm going to flip the normal first. Uh, actually, I don't think I want to. Okay. Let me select, please. Fine. I'll do it the hard way. Normally, I can use the tool here, but there's two here, two seam lines here, which is causing it to be a little mad at me. To change the angle manually, I can use the fold arrangement tool and then just grab that angle and move it. Or you can do it just in the property editor, selecting the sewing line and then choosing your custom angle. And you can adjust your fold line in that way as well. So just remember that right now I'm using 20 particle distance. And let me make sure I have the me my normals in the correct direction. Okay. And this is in the underarm, so I'm going to go ahead and taper this edge just by doing this. So there's less bulk underneath that arm. And then I'm going to go ahead and just mirror copy this, selecting that pattern, right clicking, and then choosing, I don't want a symmetric one, I'm going to do copy, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose mirror paste or control R, oh no, fine. It mirror pastes across the uh, horizontal line, but not the Y axis, so. Lesson re-remembered. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sew that to that same seam line. And I can see here that I've made a mistake. So this, if I were to let this go in, this is going to cause a collision issue and the seams are crossing. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I can just go ahead and use the sewing in 3D. So I can just sew it in the 3D window. And I can see here now that it is going to sew in properly. So instead of just letting it fly into the garment, I'm going to use another option, which is superimpose. 
So I can do superimpose over, under, or side, and I'm going to choose side and simulate. Now I need to check which one has the There it goes. So it's causing some collision issues. This is a great example of another uh, another good practice is if this is going to be a layer above, I'm going to use the simulation properties and go to layer and make this layer one. This is great for doing layering for like suits and jackets and stuff. When I make something a layer one, it's going to make it pop out and anything below it is a lower value and it will not go underneath it. goes. I mean, okay, this is fine. Definitely not as I intended, but I'll just flip that normal. And make this back to layer zero. There we go. So now I've basically got the start of a twisting raw edge of some knit. I do want to make this thinner though. There. Now this is a really small mesh though, so keep in mind that I'm going to freeze this so that it doesn't simulate as I'm working on the actual jacket. So I'm going to do the same thing to the front as well. Same concept. I'm measuring this line using my edit pattern tool and I'm just selecting it and it's showing me the measurement of this line which is 646.9. So I'm just going to make a rectangle that is 646.9 and again making the height. Well, just gonna make the height 10 and again, I'm just tapering the edges. This wouldn't be done in real life on real garments but for the sake of collision issues, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. We'll do this in another way. So if you didn't want to blast apart your shirt, you can, let me merge this back, and you can just use an internal line and sew it to your internal line. So in real life, you would have this shirt be separate and then these pieces would be like seam allowances that are on the exterior. But with Marvelous Designer, you can do things in whichever way you prefer that works best for your workflow. So again, I am choosing the superimposed side option. And while this is selected, I'm making this layer one just to make sure that it pops out and it doesn't cause me any issues as I'm working. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. and I'm going to flip the normals just so I have the exterior. There we go. Because these aren't going to be seen. I guess I can probably. Lowering the particle distance to cause a little bit less of an issue here. So um, also addressing the ripped question again, you can use the same concept of making a hole in your garment and then doing the same thing with these um, strands and then merging those lines, but it is a lot more work than just doing that texture. So just keep that in mind with how much work you actually want to do versus making everything in one software which is fine, it's just gonna take you a lot more time. And as you can see here, you're going to have to use a lot um, lower of a particle distance. Cause they're still angry, just <laughs> angry, just because the mesh beneath them is 20. If I made them all 10, 
it's causing a little bit less of an issue. This one here, though, is just having turned and turned custom angle. Actually, yeah, I'll keep it at turned because then this way it'll stay down. But yeah, just for the sake of this design, we're going to call this shirt pretty much done. It's just an undershirt that's going underneath the rest of the garment. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze this. Actually, first I'm going to go ahead and file X or save as garment. I'm going to make a new folder. Men's shirt. And then just for the sake of simulation, I am going to get rid of this. It is a lot easier to work in garment pieces for the outfit rather than working entirely with the outfit and it w because then I don't need to worry about everything simulating here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this from the workspace and let's go ahead and start on that jacket. I'm just gonna pull up a leather jacket reference for myself all right and again going to my library i could pattern this from scratch but for the sake of time mm. I'm going to just base it off of a shirt again. Right click, adding to my workspace, new. All right, so I have my larger shirt here. First of all, I want to make the jacket fit a little bit lower on the shoulder. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this shoulder point or the low point shoulder, and then just drag it out across that line. This will make the sleeve a dropped shoulder, as you can see here. And it's gonna give me a little bit more space to work. Because this is oversized, as you can see in the armhole, and I made his undershirt, oops, let me see, try to get a better angle here, a lot tighter, this is giving me a little bit more space for wearing ease for this jacket. I don't think I want that jacket. So I'm just going to make a leather bomber jacket and then we'll add the accessories. Because I'll make this one a drop shoulder. I think last time I made a jacket that was a raglan sleeve. So this will be a little bit better. Yeah. Leaving center front closed and let me see this neckline. Yeah. Let's see here. Okay. For the sake of this jacket and speed, I'm going to go ahead and keep it relatively simple so that we could then add on those extra designs that people wanted, like those OBJs. Um, feel free again to keep asking questions as I go. I'm just winging it here with the jacket. Just referencing a flight bomber jacket here. First of all, I'm going to again remove that center point and then just straighten the sleeve. Maybe not that long because I will be adding ribbing. And doing the same thing I did previously, I am just going to throw on the sleeve using the arrangement points which is very nice to use so remember to bring in your avatar at the correct scale 
I think I'm going to start saying this every stream. So when you are working with your own custom avatar, be sure to bring in your avatar at about 1200 to 2000 millimeters tall. That is about the height of these avatars. They are around 1800 millimeters tall because everything in Marvelous Designer is in human scale. And if you want your fabric to simulate at how you would expect it to in real life, you will want to bring things in at the correct scale. So I'm going to go ahead, shorten this because I know I'm bringing in some ribbing, which I'll do now on the sleeve. Turning on arrangement points again, and I'm going to throw the ribbing onto his wrist and sew it to itself and to the sleeve. Simulating. And now I have the beginning of that jacket. And let's go ahead and do the same for the center front. Another way to do this, um, a neat a trick for this, since I need to slice both the front and the back, I can select them both, right click and choose offset as internal line. And it'll show me where my line is going to be. I'm going to choose 50 millimeters. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep it extended and select okay. And selecting those, oops, I accidentally selected the sleeve lines. But selecting those multiple lines there, I can then go ahead and right click, cut and sew. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make the tab here because there is usually a center front tab to help stabilize the zipper. And again, I'm choosing cut and sew. And then, normally I would just not really measure this, but for the sake of examples, you can actually merge all of this together to make it one piece to make it a little bit easier to work with. So now I'm just merging these pieces that are going to be this lower tab for this bomber jacket. selecting the sewing lines that are of a relationship together and choosing merge. Because there is a sewing relationship to get to those pieces, I can easily, oops, not that one, merge them together. Using the edit sewing tool or the B hotkey. Right click and merge. There we go. So now I have this entire piece as one solid piece. So now here I have the beginning of my ribbing for the sleeves and for the waist here. And ribbing is generally smaller as you can see on the sleeve than the actual garment it's sewing into. So I can just shorten that and simulate and it will be a little bit tighter on his waist. Now it looks like 
I did not make a symmetrical piece for the other arm. So if I want to make a symmetrical piece, I can right click, go to clone pattern with linked editing, symmetric pattern with sewing, or I can just choose the hotkey control D and bring it over. And it will bring me this over to the workspace. And then I can space bar to simulate and I have the beginning of this bomber jacket. I want the ribbing to be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna grab those pieces, just holding shift to grab multiple and just make it wider. Probably not, not that way, I'm just, there we go. And if I need to check my strain map, because I might have made this a little bit too tight, I can always check that. Looks like it's okay. I can also increase the shirt width as well to make this a little bit baggier. But remember, if I'm, if I'm manipulating the torso, I also need to manipulate the sleeves just a little bit. There we go. So now I have a little bit more wearing ease or, you know, in this case, or it's bag here. All right. So I do want to add a collar. Do I want to add a collar or do I want to just leave it? Because I'm making an underpiece that's going to be a little more important. No, I'll add a collar. So I'm going to measure this first for my collar. So I am selecting, again, I'm measuring my lines because it's going to sew in without any um, stretch or wrinkling. So I have 236.7. Again, that's on the half. So 236.7 width and height will be 100 millimeters. It's definitely too tall, but I can always adjust it. Because this is on the half, I'm going to right click and choose unfold with symmetrical editing. So here's where we can have fun with the collars. I also, if I wanted, since we have garments here, I could probably take it from some other garment. Let me close this. And if you've already made your patterns for another piece, you can all you can do this with that as well. So I could go to jackets. I don't want those. Let's see. Like, let's say I wanted one of these neck pieces here. If I click this, I could try to grab some of these necklines, but I'm going to just make this from scratch. They don't have what I'm looking for. So I'm going to remove modular relationship. Yes, thank you. And I'll keep making it from scratch. And then sewing from center. There we go. This will be a pretty straight collar and it'll have a gap on the back. So I'm going to have to do some manipulation, but let's go ahead and sew it into the shirt. And I can also see which side I've picked. Holding shift to sew into multiple lines and simulate. So here is the beginning of this collar. So it's a basic standard collar. What I need to do is remove some of this gap in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and use the slash and spread option. I think someone was asking about pins, but this is another um, thing you can use or tacks. I can use tack on avatar or tack to itself or ta fabric to fabric. If I simulate that after using tack, 
I can adjust the fit of my garment without actually having to cut it and see what I need to make changes with, um, with. So like I thought, I need to basically cut a little V out of this back and have it curve just a little bit upward to have it fit a little closer to the back of his neck. So I can do that multiple ways just by using the internal line or like what I tried a second ago, using the slash and spread. I'm going to remove linked editing for this and then slash and spread right off that center. I keep doing it the wrong way. Fine. I'm just going to use the V to cut it out. And so, and now it fits a little bit better on the back of his neck. And I can just make those adjustments where I need to. Like you don't actually need to take a lot out of it. Oop. Let me turn off. Uh, looks like something happened with sewing. Let's see. And I did that. Don't know why that did that, but okay. And again, I'm just cleaning this up, making this a smoother curve, and then rotating it. So here we can see that my fit isn't, is still having some problems, but it's really just because of this curve in the center back. So I'm just gonna make it a little smaller and pull this back a little bit. just so I have that curve a little bit better. So now here, if I wanted, I could open this up. Let's take a look and see how this drapes when I remove that sewing relationship from the center front. Our algorithm is not, is created by our, in our, um, that is not where our algorithm comes from. I can tell you that. It is it is in-house proprietary knowledge. Um, so we do not currently um, implement any Seagraph paperwork papers about cloth simulation. As far as I'm aware, that is up to the developers. Okay, so let's see if I want to just kind of play around with it. I'll keep this pretty simple, I think. Mm, do I want to make this rolled? Or not? Yeah, let's roll this collar just a little bit here. So I'm adding a roll line. So now I can show you the fold arrangement. From that fold line.
There we go. So it's closer to an actual bomber jacket if we wanted to have that. I'm keeping this pretty simple just for the sake of speed. I have one hour left. So let's go ahead and add a zipper to the center front here. Can I do it in here now? Yes, we can. I'm going to hold shift to keep it going. I'll just do it in the 3D window. Come here. Turn off simulation so I can actually apply it. So I'm using the zipper. I'm just clicking as I'm going down. I prefer doing it in the 3D window than the 2D window and double clicking to finish. And doing the same to the other side that it is sewing to. Double clicking to finish that. Give it a second, and it'll create a zipper for me. Yes, I know you're mad because I did that. Turning off simulation. My zipper doesn't want to go in the shape that, it's, that I've had it just because I did the fold line. So I'm going to open my zipper partially just for the sake of this. And then let this come down. so that my jacket's open. And let's go ahead and bring in the leather because I'm doing each piece as a different set, as a different um, garment. So I can then at the very end, bring in the entire look together. Leather, I can't take. I'm gonna bring in the lambskin leather for the coat. Control A and drag and drop onto the coat. Now I also need to bring in some ribbing, so I'm going to grab a knit again. Cotton jersey rayon. We'll do Ponty. And I'm just going to select the pieces that are ribbing and that I want to be ribbing and drag and drop the Ponty onto that. Now that these all look pretty blocky just because I am still working in 20 particle distance. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and grab from another garment some pockets so that we can speed this up a little bit. We have all of our tutorials that I linked at the beginning of this lesson that teaches you how to use MD by us using best practices on our YouTube channel. So if you want to learn how to use Marvelous Designer, just follow our YouTube tutorials that have been made in like 2019 onward. Um, we still have the old ones up currently just because some people do still like them, but we might take those down. So follow our beginner introdu introduction tutorials, beginner garment tutorials, starting from the introduction series to beginner to complex garment. So I'm actually gonna use the pants I'm probably gonna take, adding to my workspace. The only reason I'm bringing in this garment as add is because I want my pocket pattern. I'm gonna take this pocket pattern and put it on the jacket because I've already made it and I want it, it's mine now. Copying and I'm gonna paste that onto the existing bomber jacket pattern. And I'm taking this one and I don't need this garment anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it because I've taken the internal line and the pocket and I can now use that asset separately. Somewhere else I've hidden it from myself recently, but I did already make a whole pocket tutorial, which someone had asked earlier for our um, full Marvelous Designer course. Um, I made a pocket tutorial as well that you can follow that you can then save those, those pockets as a full garment and bring it in and do exactly what I did. And then you can just reuse those same assets. 
but this might be pretty dense because I made these for these pockets aren't meant for leather but we're gonna see how it looks when we apply leather to it Oops. leather and let me rotate this so it's straight Rotate X axis. There we go. So they are now straight up and down, and I'm just going to go ahead and so grab my pocket, bring it down. Grab the whole pocket. There we go. And sew it into the workspace. Now in this case, I do not want to use the superimpose option because I've already simulated this. I do not want to ruin that simulation again. So what I'm going to do, which is the hard, th this is the hard way, but it's not that hard, is just bring it as close as I can to the garment and just bring it onto it, making sure it's still layer zero to layer zero, and then simulate. And there is my functional pocket. And I can do the exact same thing now that this has been created and sewn to this symmetrically linked jacket front. I'm just going to create symmetrical pattern with sewing, drag and drop it into my workspace, and then just do the same thing. There we go. So let's go ahead and add oops, some more design details. I want to add that little strap that goes here. So let's go ahead and do that. A good use of the line 3D pattern tool is going to be drawing it, you know, approximately on the front and the back so that I have it attached. Turn this into internal shape. And now I can also true this up. Because this is cyberpunk, but a lot of these actually just have regular pieces, which is bomber jackets and things like that. I'm just going to add that design detail. I'm going to pull this up. And this one too. Because I want a point. There we go. And I can now do this is a fun little trick. Selecting these pieces, um, I can do, I could have, if I did this perfectly, I did, as you saw, I needed to true it up. I can then go ahead and just do this. Um, do I want to, I'm not going to do it the hard way. We're going to do it fast because I want to actually finish this look for, for the stream. I can actually cut this out and turn it into a pattern, like trace it using the trace tool. But in this case, I'm just going to go right ahead and make it from a little bit quicker. Add a point. Because I got to bring buttons in and things like that. I'm just using the free sewing tool here. Holding shift. Yeah. And I'm going to use another option to create the look of sewing. Just so I know at the end when I when I do this. I'll be putting some sewing lines there. 
And then I don't want to add a button yet, so I will use the pin to garment so you guys can see that because I did see a question about that earlier. Again, I'm going to use the superimpose over in this case. Maybe side will actually be closer because it depends on how you've sewn it. There we go. Side will be the best for simulating this. Simulate. Again, this is 20 particle distance. And I will just use the pin in this case because I don't want to bring in or tack. I don't want to bring in my buttons yet just because it will cause it'll make it a lot slower to simulate. I'm just going to use the tack and I'm going to tack this to the shirt. So I know it's going to be there. And it'll stay. Now the one thing with tack is that I can't actually use symmetrical editing with it. So I'm going to have to tack every single piece as I go. So that's why I'm only doing the point, the, the front there. Pulling this out of the garment and then just tacking it to the similar spots. And there we go. Probably make this a little shorter as I can see it's a little big just because I'm eyeballing this. And then let's actually start with some wrinkling here. I'm going to make this 10 particle distance and pull it up his arm. This is leather lambskin. You can technically make a pom-pom in Marvelous Designer, but it's going to be the same kind of a, a issue. Not really an issue, but imagine the size and density of the mesh that you're going to have to create to make a pom-pom. Showing you the mesh here. Imagine making a pom-pom. This is 10 particle distance. Your pom-pom is probably going to use at the... If, if it could, it would want to use lower than 5. You could probably make... You can make fringe, but I wouldn't recommend you making a pom-pom in Marvelous Designer just because it would be simulating every single strand. And it might be frustrating and, might, and probably not the most efficient way of working. Just because of the speed that it would take to simulate that. You can. I don't know if you want to, though. And let's actually add some more trim now. Let's start making this part. <laughs> let's start making it cyberpunk now. <laughs> Here at this point, you can start doing your internal lines that I'm going to make into piping that will be leather or that'll be me metallic piping. So zooming in, turning simulation off. I could draw on it by hand or I can do it the way that I'm doing it right now. Where is this? I'm actually going to use this as a reference. So I haven't done any coloring yet. But I'm going to bring in my piping, which is similar to the zipper tool. So I can just draw along my internal line here. And I'm going to do it all the way down this. And I can select my piping. I'll keep it leather lambskin. But I'm going to make a copy of this. Select my piping. If my leather lambskin is here, I want this to be metal. And I'm going to do a different color. I'm 
Let's do gray. Turn on thick textured surface. Let's not do leather. Let's do I think I haven't actually selected it. There it is. I don't like the leather texture. Let's see here. Because this is leather as metal. So let's actually make this... I could make it flat trim, but just for the sake of the concept is there. You can do this as well as you can do. I'll do the other side a little different because that's the point. I'm going to do offset as internal line again, and it'll show me the direction. I don't, I want five. And I'm making sure to extend trim to pattern outline. Making sure, because what I'm going to do is cut and sew these pieces. Because this is another this is another way to do it. I could also do a pattern on top if I wanted. And I can make this, let's make this one a nylon. Just so we have a different example. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Nylon, drag and drop. And we'll make the nylon also metal. And I'm going to drag it onto there. Change the color to silver. And I'm going to put the... Oh, it's symmetrical. Like, ah, that's fine. You saw it with piping. Here, we'll do it with actual patterning. So when I did the cut and sew method, it keeps the pattern integrity. So I can sew it back together if I need to. And I still have my patterns here. You could do it the other way, as I said, which is to do it as a patch. But this way it is inside of the actual pattern. You don't have to use uh, metal. You can actually use like uh, a glow option as well. I've just chosen metal at this point. And I will stabilize these just because leather is heavier than nylon. Give me presets. Bond. So bond and sky, just for you guys, for everyone to know. Um, bonding is applying adhesive or a bonded interfacing. So it's stabilizing it and it's adding a material to the back of it. And so it's made it a little bit stiffer. Oh, it looks like what I did when I cut it, I did lose my zipper. So I'll just bring that right back in. And for the zipper, I'll leave it as it is. But I don't want it all the way closed. Okay, so 
I'm going to pull up the other sleeve just a little bit as well while simulating. And the reason I've left this relatively plain is because I'm going to try to put a hood underneath this over the shirt or I'm going to just give him some sort of face covering because in this dystopian universe, you know, he either needs to protect himself from, you know, disease or from sand and pollution. So let's go ahead and do that. But first, I... Uh, the first, let's go ahead and color this and then, sorry. First, let's go ahead and color this and then move on. But I did promise that I would bring in some OBJs. So let me go ahead and actually do that as fast as I can. I'm going to stabilize this upper sleeve by making a copy using the trace tool. Traces pattern. Sew this on just so we have somewhere to sew the decorative parts too. Again, great option to use the superimpose over. and symmetrical pattern with sewing. Again, superimpose over. And just for fun, let's go ahead and make this a little bit, have a little bit of pressure. And then I do need to cut this piece if I wanna add pressure. Cut and sew, adding that a reverse value of pressure, so negative 10 and a negative 10. Oh, did I remove the sewing relationship when I cut it? I did. There we go. So let's go ahead and bring in something that Eric made for a previous stream. Import, let me actually find where I put it. Desktop stream files. Can you guys see me? Just making sure. Looks like Eric lo <laughs> looks like Eric lost lost it. Did we lose the connection? Are we all still here? All right, cool. Looks like we just, uh, just like, it looks like Eric just lost it. So I'm going to go find that OBJ real quick. All right, cool. Glad to know I'm still here. So let me grab my OBJ. I just need to find out where I placed it. Sh stream files. Not what I want. Ah, oh, host. Okay, my couplings. There they are. File. Import OBJ. Desktop stream files. Avatars, because it's saved as an avatar. Let's see here. Don't remember which one it is, so I'm going to bring in one of the three. 
add, make sure you import add object as trim. So for those of you who asked about the rhinestone, <laughs> no, I'm Drax, you can't see me. If I, if I hold really still, I'm invisible. I'm, I'm bringing it in as a trim. Let's see if this is the one I'm looking for. I mean, sure. I can move, I can make some changes, but. So what I just did, let me explain. I brought in this OBJ as a trim and there's this little glue bottle here that I can then use to glue it to a point on the fabric. And when it's imported as a trim, it also has weights. So if I, <laughs> I'm going to simulate this. It's going to be very heavy. <laughs> so you can see here that it's pulling down because the weight is 65.34 grams. So I can increase the weight or decrease the weight. But this way, if I um, bring in things and they need to have weight, they will pull down on the fabric. So I, this also applies to buttons and other things that you bring in. So I'm going to go ahead, copy and paste the same trim. And I'm just going to put it on the front and the back. Just so you guys can see, this is the same concept that you would be applying. Woo! Yeah, let's adjust that. Turning simulation off to rhinestones if you were to bring them in. I do need to adjust how this is laying though. That'll pop out. You cannot sew things to the trim. The trim is just being brought in on the top of everything else at the end. Think of it that way. So if you wanted to sew things to whatever you're using as a trim, you would bring it in as an avatar. So you would add as an avatar, but the thing is that with adding as an avatar, it's going to have a little bit of a different need. So if you bring in one second. Bring this as 20. Just I'm adding this because it is changing the drape due to the weight of the trim. So if you bring in some, if you want to bring in something that will interact with the materials, bring it in as an OBJ or as an avatar. Bring the OBJ in as an avatar. But if you want them to just be a fancy trim that you don't want to interact with other things, but you want it to float and move with the material, then you're going to bring it in as a trim. Turning simulation off and there. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side here, just so it's symmetrical. It keeps wobbling now. This is fun. When you make copies, just be aware that it might do this to you as well. Because it's making an exact mirrored copy, not how I wanted it to be. So I can also just delete that. File, import, add, OBJ. I'll grab the base coupling again. Making sure it's add. If you wanted to add, if you wanted to do um, what you asked um, Bizu, you would add avatar, but I want to add it as a trim. So I'm just bringing it in and then pasting it. Because of how it was made and how I'm importing it, um, where it was on the z-axis, that's why it's coming in as it is. But I can just plop it down and then rotate it. using the glue. 
selecting as center as I can. And then rotating it just so it's symmetrical. Stop. I think. Okay. There we go. Well, it's it's because of the symmetry function normally would work. It's just of how I originally saved the file. Um, cuz it's coming in not at the z it's not coming in at 00, zero it's coming in floating in the air. That's my fault. If you had imported it properly, then it wouldn't have as much of a problem as you are watching me struggle with. I will show you the buttons and you'll see how much easier that is. So I'm going to have to remove these really quick. So because I'm finishing off this outfit, I'm going to apply button to the shirt. Just to the one side because it's symmetrically linked and then I'm going to apply the button hole here and here's where I'm going to make this is where finer details are coming in it goes a little bit slower buttonhole editing my buttonhole width I'm going to make this 15 And then I'm going to put the button through the buttonhole and then selecting the button duplicate symmetric pattern. Now I have the button on both sides and same with this duplicate to symmetric pattern. And again, I'm going to put the button through the buttonhole and it's much easier and and works more symmetrically if I do this. You can also um, import that same OBJ that I did. I can turn that that I'm importing as a trim. I can actually bring that in as of buttons if I wanted. Um, I don't think I because of how I saved it, I can't, but I would just go to button shape. There's a plus here where I would select the OBJ and then a picture of it. And then I would make that into a button. But just make sure when you make your buttons and your OBJs that you keep everything at at zero axis. And it'll make it a lot easier to work with. Simulating this back down. Excuse me, can you go back please? Looks like I might have made this a little too small, so it's pulling on the neck. So I'm just going to make this a little wider. Back to being a little too long, which is fine. Go. All right, I see how it is. Full angle, 360. Go. Caller, you are not supposed to stand up today. Invert selection, freeze. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh. Come 
Okay, there we go. And to prevent it from doing that again, I'm gonna select this collar because I want it to stay down. I'm not adding the actual curve line here, but I want this collar to stay as it is. So what I'm going to do is select my pattern, scroll, scroll down and go to solidify. This will solidify this shape so that it doesn't move around as easily anymore. It's not perfect and it's not true because it'll want to keep this shape, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and change the colors here. So let's go. Let's do. Do brown, but we'll make it like really dark brown. Turning. I'll turn this off. So it looks nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and color the center front. I don't know if I want to keep it at dark gray or dark brown, but let's go ahead and just make that change. I'm just going to make the zipper gray and metallic. Not that metallic. Bring that color back and then do the same to the zipper and just eyedropper tool that we'll have it bad I guess and then I'm going to select all of this turning simulation off We're actually going to make this brown just for the sake of this. And let's get a leather texture to it. Let's see, do I want, do I want a leather texture? Eh. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Select the actual. Make that brown, just for the sake of this. Color, eyedropper tool. And then where is the, the knit ponte? I'm gonna go ahead and make that similar brown, but slightly off. A little bit lighter for the rest of this. And then let's go ahead and just export this. I can change the colors at the end, but I want to get us to at least having some sort of garment finished. Garment, desktop. And I'm gonna bring in the shirt this time. Add garment. I'm gonna add that shirt. Cause I'm gonna add
the mask slash hood to this next. So, actually, I think I don't want to add the shirt yet. I'm going to use the draw on avatar tool. Or the line avatar tool. And I'm going to create a harness style piece here. Probably on the half. Um, where do I want? Okay. I can make adjustments as I go. I am going to steal other assets from other projects to finish this up a little quicker. Not steal, it's efficient. It's not stealing if it's efficient and I've already made it, it's fine. So I'm using the draw on avatar tool here. This is useful for drawing on my avatar if I don't know my pattern and I'm just drafting from, from scratch as you can see here. I'm just gonna make some adjustments. And let's go ahead and pull this out actually. Yeah, whatever, we'll keep it like that. Then I'm going to choose flatten. And select those pieces and I have my pattern pieces. Now something I didn't do was I didn't keep these lines straight so it looks good but in the 2D window it's pretty warped. So what I'm going to do is use the edit tool and all the lines I want to be straight I'm going to select them. Right click and flatten as straight line. Now when I flatten It'll be a little bit cleaner. Not not perfect, but it's it's there. Yeah, so the draw on avatar tool is right here, right next to the draw on on um, the three D line tool, line avatar tool. You can use this on anything that is imported as an avatar. So if you're making a couch, you can use this to trace the couch and things like that. And then you can just start drafting your pattern this way. But make sure to keep your straight lines as straight lines. And this tool is really reliant upon the topology of what you've imported. So like a woman, like, like women's wear or like men's wear, if you've seen it for, for suits, they do have darts. Things like this that have the, the high point or the apex of, for example, the bust. You do want to create um, lines. when you are working so that uh with this tool specifically so that you create gaps for the garment or for the fabric to open up otherwise you will just get a warped pattern that doesn't fit as you think it's going to fit so i've pretty much made this let me go ahead and make a symmetric piece and then create sewing relationships for them I'm going to freeze the original one. So this just kind of flies in. And I'm going to add straps to this. That donut shape piece was made in another software specifically for a spacesuit outfit, but you can make, you can make, I guess, donut pieces in Marvelous Designer, but you have to be aware that you are working with a cloth simulation program for something that you're trying to turn into a, a hard piece. So just be aware of that. You can increase the thickness to do that, but it might not look as you are hoping. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and steal the hood from that hoodie. 
and I have a cat who is saying that I should have maybe changed my pattern a little bit, but that's okay. Don't judge me, child. Add to workspace. Make sure it's add, not open. Yeah. What I want is the hood and probably the torso piece, just in case I make any mistakes. What I really want. Eh. So here's two things. I can do this because I just drew this freehand and I didn't check the fit. I'm going to make this layer one and see what happens. Thank you. Freeze it. And this will go underneath it if it can. Hi, sweet. Yeah, this is too close to the skin, so I'm going to make this layer zero. Yeah. Maddie is the third assistant. She is uh, critiquing my work. Luckily, you can't understand her. She's being very mean. Unfreeze and... Yeah. Now I'll make this layer one. So I can see how I've designed this. So it does look like I just made it a center point, which was my fear that I did it that way. So I'm just gonna go right ahead and steal right here. Why? Cause I can. other way. Cut. Gimme. And I'm just freehanding this. There we go not really going to be perfectly fitting into the hood, but it's close enough. Close enough for only having a couple minutes left. Yeah. Again, using the free sewing tool, holding shift as I'm sewing them all together. So I can see here with how I've designed my pattern, it's not perfect. In fact, it's too close to the hood. It's too tight in the center front. At least I can pull it out. And then let's go ahead and make a long strap. Right click again, superimpose side, make this probably five particle distance just to pull it out of that avatar. Yeah. All right, how many twists does this have in it? All right, so this has a few twists in the fit here. Number one, I can see an issue already, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that before I do anything else. And wing it. 
So this is having some fit issues. As you can see, it's going into his underarm and causing this to bunch. So what I'm going to do is just turn this into a full harness, choose cut, let those pieces fall how they want to actually fall. <laughs> I can't believe she is playing with a... Are you done? Okay. She has all the toys in the world and she is just playing with a post-it note. Alright, I'm going to choose merge on this and then merge on this one. Oh, wrong way. Select the line you want it to merge to and then it'll merge to it. Okay. Oh, I didn't want the angle to do that. I guess I really did. Okay, I did it the wrong way. Pull this up so it angles outward. There we go. And then I'm just going to create a waist strap piece. <laughs> this is the most active you've been in a long time, kitten. Turning on... arrangements and adjusting the offset. Definitely not big enough. Sewing it to itself and smoothing. Then I'm just going to go right ahead and freehand this in the 3D window. Double click to finish. Using my little reference ghost line. And then doing the same to this one. Because then once you've actually just kind of free handed it, you can always adjust it as you go. Again, using the free sewing tool, sewing it in the 3D window. And I could see it. This way it's actually laying flat on him. This is the interesting looking, but okay. Now that I've created these pieces, I can then, again, this is why you want to work symmetrically. Symmetric pattern with sewing. I can do this and then what I'm going to do now is because I have this piece here, I've selected my center and I'm just going to split it down the center. Cut. Unfold with symmetric editing. I figured it wasn't straight. Make sure it's straight. Align. Left. and then unfold with symmetric editing. Now I have created that sewing relationship <clears throat> that I don't need to eyeball for a second time. And I've pretty much created this under harness that'll go over that shirt. He lost his shirt pl playing dice, yeah. Well, this is, this is like a buckle attachment. I, I put buckles here, but we're about to run out of time. So I'm going to do one last thing, which is give him a, it will probably run a little bit longer than I want, but that's okay. Cause I'm just making a tube for his face. I just, I want to protect the face from the elements and from the government, you know, how you do.
beautiful. His whole face. All of it. <laughs> Except for his lips. Alright, come on. Clearly I've made this a little too tight. Or maybe not. We'll see. And I'm going to attach this to that neckline. It's probably a little on the taller side because I don't want that many wrinkles. Yeah, the cat should be fine. She just gets mad at me about not giving her all the food, but she's on a diet, so. We'll stick with this simple gator style mask. I do have other 3D printing, 3D masks that we could do, like the folded ones, but that'll take a little bit more time. We'll just use this one for, for the dust and the pollution in the air. And let's go ahead and, is this anywhere else? I'm gonna make a copy of it just in case. And, We'll just make this a bright color, just for fun. I'll make it a little faded. And then... We'll give it a velvet texture. Okay, making sure that this is a lower layer, I'm going to reselect all of these pieces again making them all layer one, moving this. Activating them, putting them over. Yeah, you mad lady? So I'm going from the back, so I'm going to go ahead and sew it into that same neck. And honestly, I think I'm going to make a change with this. Maddie, my sweet child, what is it? I'm going to go ahead and actually curve this a different location, a different way. Because I don't like how this looks, but now that I've fixed it, I can... Now that I've made an adjustment, I'm going to make an adjustment to the hood. I'm going to sew it to this internal line. And then sew the rest, too. And if you make a mistake while you're sewing, you can just use the backspace. Okay, it's pulling it up. That's what I figured would happen. Because this hood is pretty small, I'm just increasing the height of the hood. So that it will fall down. Normally I'd prefer to do a three-piece hood, but for the sake of this look here, I'm not going to. Let's see. So it's still pulling as you can see here. You can check the foot a lot of the a lot of the time. So if I want to fix this, I'm just going to go ahead and lower the front. And so it falls open. You can do other styles of hood than just this one. There's three piece hoods. There's hoods with shells on the top that are button awayable. And I can see it's pulling on the top of his head, which is causing me some annoyance here as I'm doing this. But that's okay, because I'm actually gonna pull it down over the coat. 
But first, bring all of these to one. Deactivate. I'm going to bring in that shirt. Add garment. Desktop, where, where was I putting that shirt? Men's shirt. The shirt. Add. No, I don't want to load the avatar. Activate the shirt again. Move it to the side. <clears throat> and normally I would say to you, you know, work more cleanly with your pattern slash UV map here, but it's not very clean. Also moving this to the side. To make it easier for this piece to then go above the shirt here, again, selecting the shirt, making it layer zero. Then I'm going to adjust the shrinkage weft and warp. So for the shrinkage weft is left and right, warp is up and down. I'm gonna make this 80% and simulate. So it's tight on his body. Now that I have that done, I can bring in this piece or re-simulate it. And then I will bring the t-shirt that we've made and make it back to 100% for the weft. Simulate. So this is also how you would do layering for pants and things like that. So speaking of pants, let's go ahead and bring in those uh, military pants. Adding to my workspace. Do not load the pose for the avatar. Eh. While it's selected, move it out of the way. This is really dense. And I want to tuck the shirt into my pants. So I'm going to select my pants and also make them layer one. Yes, thank you. And my shirt's going to go into the pants. That looks terrible, but okay. <laughs> the harness. <laughs> okay. Um. I don't like that. One second. That's... Maybe we can get away with not having the pants be layer. It's not a good look. Guys. <laughs> This gentleman is taunted on the street. He is bullied. It's okay. It's fine. I'll make an adjustment. Hold on. It's the harness that's doing it. Eh. Come on. Go back. I didn't mean to grab some of the pants. Okay. So I'm just going to make the harness underarm and uncomfy. So we're going to do that because that is not a good look. So I'm just going to increase this and increase this and then sew them together. G, I sure hope it doesn't twist. It did. That's okay, though. There we go. Now 
Now it's a little less bad. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that harness in the front was not nice. Okay, this needs to be a little bit tighter on his underarm. Yeah, you can move fabric as it's simulating. I currently just have a lot of mesh in this scene. So it's causing problems. But here's an example. Um, let's bring in the coat we made earlier. Add garment. Desktop, men's shirt, the jacket. Because I just pulled it up while it was simulating. And I made the wrinkles on the sleeves. I don't need to load my avatar, thank you. Okay, moving this, selecting all of this. Making sure it's frozen. Selecting all of this, turning it to layer zero. Oops, okay, move it so you can see. I'm probably just going to delete the sleeves just for the sake of the simulation, but we did design the sleeves. This jacket is 20 particle distance. I'm going to make it 10. And then make it layer one. Thank you. Keeping it frozen. This is going to pop out. As you saw, though, someone had asked earlier about bringing in more detail pieces. Bringing in more detail pieces causes the simulation to slow down. So I'm bringing everything in at the last minute, which is what you want to do when you finish up your detail. Look at that. Oh, he's just he's just going to be made fun of. Let's go ahead and delete the sleeves. So there's a lot of detail in the center front here, which is why it's trying to go and collide with it. But I'm, as you saw here, uh, Katya, I'm literally just pulling it out and then I can let it drape. And this is why I've kept his hood on. Okay, let's free, let's deactivate. Oop. I do want to tuck in that shirt now that it looks less unfortunate. So let's make this. So like all of this, make it layer one again. Make this not frozen. I need to apply colors to these. But now I'm tucking my shirt into the pants. I should do it the other way. Freeze the shirt. Activate all this. Pants will go over the shirt. Activate the shirt one more time. Deactivate all the layers for this one. Making sure that's layer one. Activate once more. Oh, thank God. 
make sure to freeze it. I'm freezing everything that I'm not working with just to make the simulation a little bit faster. You were learning how to design clothes because that's what you learned. And actually, let's just go ahead and open this jacket just so we can see. This. So I can just use fasten zipper or I can just pull it down like you saw. Okay, so now we do. Now we just make this pretty. Come here. So for the pants, I'm just going to make them nylon. Fabric 3 library. Go into my fabric. Because, honestly, with uh, this stuff, it would end up pr being um, Gore-Tex at this point. Not Featherweight. I want Matte. Select all of this pant. Drag and drop. Matte, but I don't want it to be that matte. Let's do... Grayish. We'll keep this shirt brown. I want to actually grab one of my substance textures for the ribbing here. Texture, PBR, substance. I'm grab one of my substance files. Wool. Where's my ribbing? I can just look at the substance textures. Files. Oh, stylized rib. And just grab that jacket and drop it. Fine. I'm gonna do it this way. Grab the wrong one. Stylized. I want the S bar. Yes, there we go. Mm, yes. Okay. So I have more texture. I'm going to make some adjustments with this. Edit texture. I'm looking at my ribbing here. I don't want it to be this wide, so I'm just going to go ahead and shrink it. And I also don't want it to be blue. I could do dirty gray. Or I could keep it eye drop. Mm. I'll have it be dirty. There we go. A little better. And that's being applied to the sleeves. So I see my sleeves fell. So someone had asked about sculpting with wrinkles. Just I can just pull it. I 
I just have a lot in the scene right now. And my pants are doing something. These pants were made to be functional pants, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the zipper piece there. That's what's causing the issue. And then just sew it to itself again. There we go. And let's go ahead and then reactivate the shirt. Let's see the knit cotton rayon. Let's also make this. I wonder if I can. I don't want to do that. Let's make this um, let's figure out the color that we want for this guy. Let's just do gray for now. Did I just do top stitching? We could just give him a we'll give him a black shirt and then I'm going to apply a graphic to that shirt so that we have a little bit of contrast. Graphic 2D pattern, stream files, apply graphic. I have this thing. If I want it to be black, well, may maybe it'll be white. Oop. Just to have a graphic. Something a little different. And then let's go ahead and activate this guy. So this is all Terry. Let's make this also nylon except for this velvet. I just picked velvet. We don't have to do velvet, but it drapes really nice. Throw that on there. I almost want to make his shirt pink. Let's just go, let's just make it pink. Let's just go. Or like fuchsia. Okay, maybe not. We'll do blue. I noticed that this is a very green gray and I don't like it. I just always make things gray and I just don't know why I want everything to be gray. Just make everything gray and brown. Okay. 
trying to keep the leather jacket leather color, but... I'm gonna make one more fabric here. I drop it to match. I went too fast. Gray goes with everything, but the thing is that it's cyberpunk. It should have glowing pieces. I'd probably make these bits glow and the interior of this hood glow. I mean, we could do that. I'll just make the interior of the hood a bright color. And I'm just going to make this fabric preset. A word. Yeah, we'll just do another knit jersey for that, just so it drapes correctly. And then grabbing my patterns. The layer clone under. And I'm going to physically move them first because I want them to be under in my workspace. All right, for this one, let's actually make this a bright, a bright color. Let me actually throw it on there first. Hide your face. And I like the yellow. I just want, I don't know why, I just want everything to be gray. I just, I'm just, I'm just like, leather jacket, gray everything else. But, being the lower class, which is what we were going for, uh, in the world of a cyberpunk world here, let's, let's just make this. I mean, it looks like the cyberpunk one, but also we could just be yellow. Maddie, don't judge me. <laughs> Everything else is gray. I, I don't know why I like gray. Well, it's because of the different versions of cyberpunk. You know, you can always go from colors from here on. So we've already designed the garments. Now we can just do the color story. I want this to be... We'll do... We can do green. We can do lime green to make it match. And we can make lime green pants. You know, let's just go full out. Like... All the colors. Because then I can make this lime green metal. Or plastic. Let's see. Because I would actually make this a source of light, but right in Marvelous Designer, it's for cloth right now. I'm not rendering it. So I'm just going to kind of fake it using metal here. I know that's the problem. I just, oh, I, I want everything to be gray. Let's make this also green. We're just going to make it all acid colors. I mean, why? Why not? What fabric is this one? Okay, that's the nylon featherweight. 
Go make it green. I drop her. Green. Let's make these green Gore-Tex because you know, like what we would have nowadays would be the Gore-Tex. So that's why I'm leaving it at the mat. Well, actually we'll do, we'll, you know what? We're not going to do matte. We're going to do relatively silk satin because that's what it generally Gore-Tex is going to look like. And then I'm going to reduce the reflective and then we're going to make them green pants. Maybe not that green. Hi. Oh, I forgot I also made this the same. Then we'll just make a copy. Copy. Make it green. Let me. I drop. Maybe not that level of metalness. <laughs> Metal pants. <laughs> one second. I have very, very much made this messy. One sec. Materials I'm not using versus here's my copy. Keep your workspace clean or else you're going to give yourself shiny pants. Too shiny of pants. Let's go ahead and actually make this like a almost black green just for fun. But let me turn this on as well. But you can get the concept here. We have all the pieces put together. Borderline seven. I mean, that was... 70s 80s 80s was the original is the beginning of it puffer jacket but this is this is pretty acid here if i did if i wanted i could probably go the other route of where is this leather more more realistic and accurate we could probably still make this a green, a green black. Just because things aren't ever really going to truly match. Let me turn off those internal lines. I still kind of like the green on this though, so I might just leave it. Oh, let's fix those buttons because we're almost done here. Trash the button. make it match all right this one will probably just make it the same color well why did I, I backed out I know sweetie my design is, is very interesting today. Like there, it's a little bit less severe. We still have all of our finer details. This is still shining as leather, so that's why it looks a little odd. I can do Let me grab this. Oop. Honey. Don't bite me. Such a mean lady.
but yeah still it's got that leather so that's why it's looking like this let me just make a new version of whatever I want um yeah and just drag it and drop it so we don't get that artifacting in the texture as well as, I'm pretty sure this is... Metal reduce the metalness just a little bit. And let's go ahead and just kind of call that done for now. He is definitely wearing a lot of mismatched pieces, but we did cover a lot of the aspects of what is going to be parts of cyberpunk. Here you would probably want to export this and have these um, as light sources and have them glow and things and the like and probably have this one be an LED. If I wanted I would probably stabilize this and make it really stiff if I wanted it to be a hard object so I would just probably make this bonded. But another thing you can do if you don't want it to actually be a source of light is while it's... Yes, I know, Maddie. I am going a little long. While it's simulating... Okay. To make it a little faster. Selecting my hood piece. Invert selection. Freeze. And then I'm just going to pull the hood down. I'm going to let that settle. And we'll just let the cat continue to yell at me. You can see it's falling through. That is because my hood and everything are not layer zero, so it's trying to go underneath the jacket. Checking everything is layer zero. So when I pull the hood down, this time it won't have that collision issue. But as you can see, when I've added the more details, the simulation is going to be slower because I am working with just more, um, more pieces of mesh in the scene. We'll just let the hood fall so we have that pop of color. Let the hood resolve itself for a second. There it goes. And there is our outfit. Not the prettiest, but it is dystopian and this is all he could find. But we did cover all of the things that are, are relatively important for the look, as well as a lot of um, pattern making and pattern adjustment to a uh, pattern adjustment methods. He just loves green and yellow and mixing his colors.
Do we have any more questions before I go ahead and start sharing all of those links one last time? You would have gone skinny jeans, but that would be less detail. <laughs> skinny jeans aren't as um interesting visually the point it really isn't like the best look but you've learned how to create all of these things except for the pants but i just import i just brought those pants from a different project you can always use pants and make adjustments to those pants using either this pant that comes with marvelous designer or this pant that comes with marvelous designer cat proof jeans i mean gore-tex is pretty close maddie why are you yelling Do you want, you want to say hi? No, not this time. All right, let's go to the end here. Move that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you took notes. If not, this is recorded. You will be tested later. So let me go ahead and start sharing those resources one more time. Let me bring up my resource links here. So here is the link to the Discord channel. In the Discord channel, we have a lot of super users and we have a lot of users that have been honestly using it for a long time. I do also moderate, um, but please don't consistently tag me as I do have other other um, roles that I need to perform in my job aside from moderating and, and answering a lot of questions. Um, but do feel free to post questions and I do answer them if someone else already hasn't done so. As well as we have resources in there for pattern making and for like where to find free patterns that are in public domain. For those of you who are not watching us on YouTube and are watching us on Twitch, I have linked to you our YouTube channel where we have a lot of tutorials that I've been part of making uh, back in 2019 and a lot of beginner tutorials, but they did, the interface is going to be a little different. We did use um, Marvelous Designer 9 and 9.5 for those tutorials, whereas right now we are currently, if you are subscribed, we are on Marvelous Designer 10. And for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, I did cover a lot of um, very useful information during this stream. But if you want to do to follow with some follow along tutorials, here is one of the playlists for our tutorials that you can follow, which are the beginner tutorials. I believe it's the... Okay, so this is from... Why? This is from the introduction series. Um, let me grab the actual introduction series tutorials. I don't know why. That's the first one. So that's the user interface for Marvelous Designer 9. Point oh, okay, so it actually just did it. That's correct. Um, so the first one's UI. You can probably change it if you've watched my stream before. But the introduction series does cover sewing and how sewing works. I was using... Um, the free sewing tool and the other tools, the free sewing tool and the uh, N segment sewing tool. So wa make sure to watch the sewing lesson. And then the other four videos in that first playlist are making patterns from scratch. So what you saw me do earlier, which was using drape, or you actually saw me do the 3D line avatar tool. Um, I, you saw me do some tracing, and then you can also just drape things from scratch, like you did see me do, uh, I think, with the with, with the jacket collar. But they're all different concepts of pattern drafting and draping, or in this case, pattern manipulation, which is what you saw, that you can utilize in creating um, your patterns and creating garments in Marvelous Designer. So I recommend following those beginner tutorials and just keep an eye on which which way that which method you prefer because i was doing a mix of everything as well as on 
Oh, last, where is it? Here, if you have any other questions, or specifically if you have... I actually did in a... I'll answer that in a second. Um, if you have any questions or actually re requests for specific types of streams or Q&A style streams, feel free to send us a request to the community email. But please do not send us um, questions or support tickets. Please send them to the actual support email or through the support um, contact form on our website. And of course, our website is... is marvelousdesigner.com. Um, so I will most likely not be making an astronaut suit. Um, I did an astronaut suit for a stream with Think Tank, which I believe you can still watch somewhere. But yeah, thank you all for joining us on the stream today. I hope you took notes and I hope you found it informative. And let us know what you want to see for the next stream. Um, so feel free to send it in to the email or, I mean, you can comment it on the, on the forum, on the YouTube channel, but you know, feel free to do whichever. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Maddie says, um, she is done screaming and I hope you all have a good day. We will probably have another stream, not this next week, but the week after that, we are doing streams every other week. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a good rest of your day.